Okay, so today we're doing lecture nine, function test review. So today we're gonna do a couple of the questions from the actual test. We're gonna review some concepts that we learned and we're gonna talk about relations and functions. Now to start off with, not every relation is gonna be a function, right coach? So we're gonna have relations that are functions. Relations are gonna be divided up into functions. functions and relations that are not functions. And the way we're gonna determine whether or not something is a function or not is by using two tests. Do the X values repeat? Do the X values repeat? That's the first thing we're gonna be looking at. Do the X values repeat? That's the question we're gonna be asking ourselves. If yes, then it's not a function. Then it's not a function. So that's very important to understand. If the X values repeat themselves, then it's not a function. If no, if no, then it is a function, then it is a function. So that's the first way we can use to see if we're dealing with a function or whether it's not a function. That's the first test. Do the X values repeat themselves? If yes, they do repeat, then it's not gonna be a function. But if they don't repeat, if they only show up once, then it is gonna be a function. Do you agree with that coach? All right, good. He's nodding his head. So I think he agrees with me. <laughs> All right. So the second way we're gonna use to determine whether or not something is a function is we're going to use the vertical line test, the vertical line test. So I'll write that out. The vertical line test. This is a very simple test to use. When I write it out sometimes, I'll abbreviate it and I'll often abbreviate it as capital V, capital L, capital T. So you know I'm talking about the vertical line test. And this is only used with graphs. Only used with graphs. That's very important. It's tough to do the vertical line test if you don't have a graph to do it on, right? So those are the two tests we're going to be using to see whether or not something is a function. We'll use the first test, do the X values repeat themselves? If they do, it's not going to be a function. And then the second way we're going to use to determine whether or not something is a function or not is by using the vertical line test. So I'll leave that up there for a little bit. And then on the next slide, we're going to be talking about some of the questions that you'll see on the test. So once again, just as a reminder, when we have functions, we usually write them as y equals f of x. And the x is going to be the independent variable. Sometimes x is called the input. And then y is called the dependent variable. And sometimes we call y the output. And basically all a function is, it's, it's a rule that's going to assign an x value with a y value. And when we write our ordered pairs, when we do a function, the X always comes first and the Y always comes second. And that's what you're gonna see on the next slide. Okay, let's go ahead and switch on over. We're gonna be doing number one from the test, number one. So this question is going to be asking us, is this a function or not a function? So I'm gonna write function, function, or not? That is the question. We're going to be using our first test that we talked about. Do the X values repeat themselves? That's what we're going to be looking at. So here we have four choices and we're going to determine whether or not these are functions. So the first choice is going to have two comma three. 
The second ordered pair is going to be negative 4, 7. And then we have 3, negative 2, and negative 1, 9. Negative 1, 9. So the first thing I tell myself is that the X is always going to come before the Y. So I'm going to change my color to red, and I'm going to underline all the X coordinates. So my first X coordinate is going to be 2. My second X coordinate is going to be negative 4. My third X coordinate is going to be 3. And my fourth X coordinate is going to be negative 1. Now we're going to ask ourselves the question, do the X values repeat? Do the X values repeat? Question mark. Let's look at them. It looks like none of these are repeating. So yes, this is a function. So I'm going to write yes. This is a function. It doesn't break any of the rules of a function. So we can safely assume that if we were to graph this on an XY plane, it would actually pass the vertical line test and it would indeed be a function. Okay. Let's look at answer choice B. Answer choice B. We've got four, six, four, six, six, two, six, two, negative three, eight, negative three, eight. And last but not least, we have negative three, one. So now we're going to underline all the X coordinates first, and I'm going to change my color over to red to do this. So I'm going to underline all the X coordinates, which is basically going to be the four, the six, the negative three, and the negative three. And then we're going to ask ourselves, do the X values repeat or not? Yes, they do repeat, right? Negative three and negative three. So the negative three repeats itself. That means that this is not a function, not a function. If I was to graph these points, they would fail the vertical line test. So this is definitely not a function because the X values repeat themselves, right? Let's look at answer choice C. Answer choice C says eight, seven, eight, seven, negative three, two, four, seven, four, seven, and eight, zero. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna underline all the X coordinates in red. So the eight, the negative three, the four, and the eight. And we're gonna ask ourselves, do the X values repeat themselves or not? Do the X values repeat themselves? It actually turns out, yes, the eight is gonna repeat itself. See how the eight shows up twice? So this is not a function, not a function whatsoever. Right, coach? That's correct. Exactly. And now we're going to look at the last answer choice, answer choice D. Okay. For this one, we have negative 1, 6, negative 1, 6, 8, 2, 3, 5, and 4, negative 3. Okay. So now that I've got all my ordered pairs, I'm going to underline all the X coordinates. So I'm going to underline all the X coordinates that we find. I'm going to do them all in red. So negative one, eight, three, and four. So what I can determine from this is that the X values don't repeat themselves, right? Every single one is different. So we can say yes. Yes, this is a function, right? If I was to graph these points, they would actually pass the vertical line test. So that's going to be the first page of your test. It's going to be looking at all the answer choices, taking them slow one by one, and figuring out whether we have a function or not. And that's going to be based on whether the, the X values repeat themselves, OK? Now, let's look at number four next. I'll leave this up there for a few seconds, and then we're going to talk about the second way we can determine whether or not it's a function. We're going to be looking at the vertical line test. Okay, so let's look at number four.
Okay, so for number four, it says function or not. Function or not. And I think it actually asks which one is not a function. So we'll be looking at that today. Okay, so we're gonna have three answer choices and they're all gonna be graphs. Let's draw all four. We're gonna draw all four answer choices. Now keep in mind that the vertical line is going to be the Y axis. The horizontal line is going to be the X axis. The X axis always goes from left to right, but the Y axis is always gonna go from up to down, okay? Now the first graph is gonna look like this. It's just gonna be a straight line through the origin, zero, zero. So I'm gonna draw my line through there. The second graph looks like this. It's a U shape, but it's upside down. We call that a parabola. This third graph is going to be a V shape, but it's turned sideways. It's a V shape, but it's turned sideways. And then the last answer choice D is going to be a V shape that is right side up. So what we're gonna do with these four graphs is we're going to identify which ones are functions and which ones are not functions. Now, we're gonna be using the vertical line test. The vertical line test, or the VLT, as I like to call it. Right, Coach? Yeah. What we're gonna be doing is we're going to be using the vertical line test on all four of these graphs. And it's important to really remember that the vertical line test only works with graphs. It's not going to work with anything else. So if they give you a graph, they want you to use the vertical line test on it. And that's what we're going to do. Now, how do you use it? Well, the name kind of explains itself, right? We're going to be drawing vertical lines on the graphs. So I'm only going to do one vertical line per graph. You can draw it anywhere you want. I'm going to draw my first vertical line right there. On the second graph, I'm going to do a vertical line right here. Yours might be different. That's fine. I'm going to draw a vertical line right here. And then I'm going to draw a vertical line over here. So I do one vertical line per graph. And we're going to see how many times the lines go through the graphs, right? How many times do they intersect? So for the first graph, the line only goes through once. It only goes through once. So this one passes the vertical line test and we can safely assume that it is a function. We can safely assume that it is a function because it only goes through once. On answer choice B, this line only goes through once, right? It only passes through that U-shape once, so we say, yes, it is a function. Skipping over C for now, we're going to go to answer choice D. Notice that it only goes through once. It only goes through once. So we say, yes, it is a function. But look at answer choice C. Any vertical line will go through twice, right? Once up here and once down here, that fails the vertical line test. So we say, this is not a function. This is not a function. And the reason why is because the vertical line goes through more than once. So we can't allow that to happen. That means that it fails the vertical line test and it's not a function. So that's the way the vertical line test works. You're gonna be drawing your vertical lines and if they go through once, hey, no problem. But if they go through twice, you'll know that it's not a function. So that's number four, the vertical line test. Okay? All right. Now the next type of questions that you're gonna see on the test are going to be questions about domain and range. 
So I want to get to those next. We're going to do number eight and number nine on the test. So let's go ahead and look at those. Okay. Let me change on back to white and we're going to do number eight. So this one is going to ask for domain and range. Domain and range. And just as a reminder for you, you probably already know this, but in case you've been living under a rock, you know that the domain is going to be the set of all X values. So coach, if the domain is the set of all X values, then what is the range going to be? The Y values. The Y values. That's right. So when we talk about range, we're talking about Y values. So what you're going to be given is you're going to be given a chart. So let's go ahead and draw that. We're going to have a line up here. We're going to have a line down here. And we're going to have a little rectangular box. Drawing these lines as straight as I can. And there's going to be a line down the middle, definitely. Okay. So we're going to put all the X values on the top. So I'm going to put an X right here. And we're going to put all the Y values on the bottom. So I'm going to put a Y down here. And we're going to divide these into four different boxes. So we're going to have a line right here, here, and here. Okay. So what are all the X values? The X values are going to be zero for the first one, eight for the second one, negative two for the third box, and then six for the last box. And then for the Y values at the bottom, we're going to have seven, negative two, eight, and one. So the question asks, what is the domain and what is the range? And the way we write domain and range is we're going to use set notation. We're going to use set notation. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Domain and range. So we're going to have these curvy brackets. We're going to have these curvy brackets for both the domain and the range. And all it is, is it's a set. So we're using set notation. We're going to take all the X values and put them in the domain. We're going to label them from least to greatest. And we're going to take all the Y values and put them in the range from least to greatest. So let's do that. So our X values, what's the smallest X value we have or the least X value? It would be the negative two, right? So I'm going to put the negative two first and then I'm going to go up from there. I'm going to grab zero next and then I'm going to get six and then eight and I'm done. So that's the domain. And likewise, we're going to do the same for the range. We're going to take the smallest number and put it first, and we're going to take the biggest number and put it last. So we're going to start off with this negative two right here for the Y values. And then we're going to grab the one from over here, the seven from over here, and then the eight from right here. So now we have all the Y values. That is called the range, right? Okay, and then the last question it asks, is it asks, is it a function? Is it a function? Well, we just got through talking about the vertical line test, but that's not gonna help us if we don't have a graph. Instead, we're gonna be deciding whether or not the X values repeat themselves. So we're gonna be asking ourselves the question, do the X values repeat, yes or no? Do the X values repeat themselves? And it turns out, no, the X values don't repeat themselves. So yes, this is a function. It is a function. So just writing that out reminds you that you look at the X values and whether or not they repeat themselves. That's how you determine whether or not something is a function or not. Okay. 
Let's move on to number nine. Number nine. We have a chart. Let's draw it again. We're going to take all the X values and put them on top. And then we're going to take all the Y values and put them on the bottom. Pretty simple. Our first box is going to be labeling X and Y. We're going to divide the box down the middle, putting the X values on top and putting the Y values on the bottom as usual. So let's see what our numbers are going to be. Okay, for the X values, we're going to have four, three, four, six. For the Y values, we're going to have six, negative one, two, and six. Okay. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to identify the domain. Once again, the domain is the set of all X values. So we're going to be drawing the numbers from the top from least to greatest. So we start off with the lowest number, the three. We move on to the next biggest number, which is four. I notice that the four repeats itself, so we're only gonna write it once. And then the biggest number in the list is six, so that's gonna go last. And that is the domain, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's move on to the range. The range is the set of all the Y values, right? Let's go from least to greatest. We start off with negative one. Then we have a two. And then the last number we're gonna write is the six. And notice that the six repeats itself. So we're only gonna write that once. Now, the question is, is it a function or not? That's a good question. Is it a function or not? Do the X values repeat themselves? Yes. So it's not a function. It's not a function. I noticed that the X values actually do repeat themselves. Which ones repeat? The fours. The four shows up twice. Therefore, it's not a function. It would fail the vertical line test, right? So that's why we have to say it's not a function. Not all relations are going to be functions. Remember that. Okay, so that's number nine. Now, the last type of question that I wanted to do today is the function values, right? We talked about that in a previous lecture. So that's what we're going to do on the next slide. All right, let's take a look at number 16. They start off by giving us a bunch of functions and I'm gonna put them at the top. We have f of x is three x minus four. Three x minus four. G of x is two x squared plus five. Two x squared plus five. We have h of x is eight minus three x eight minus three X. And last but not least, P of X is X squared minus two X. X squared minus two X. So these are the four functions that were given and they want us to use these functions to figure out function values. Well, like we said in a previous lecture, what they're gonna do is they're gonna give you a number. It might be a positive number, it might be a negative number. It might even be zero. In this case, it's negative three. So what they want you to do is they want you to use the correct function. That's gonna be the first letter. It's either gonna be a F, G, a H, or a P. And we're gonna let X be whatever number that's on the inside. So for example, they use F of X. We're gonna let X be negative three. So we're gonna write out the function, but we're gonna replace X with a negative three and see what happens. So all I did was I kept everything about F of X the same. I've still got the three. I've still got the negative four. The only thing that's different is 
I replace the X with a negative three because that's what's on the inside right here. Okay. So let's figure out what this is going to be. I've got three times negative three. What would that be, coach? Negative nine. Negative nine. That's right. So I multiply these two numbers to get negative nine. I still have a minus four on the end. So I'm going to bring that down. Minus four. And now I have negative nine minus four. And what would that be, coach? Same sign, stay the same when you combine them. So it becomes a negative 13. Right, a negative 13. Good job. So that's going to be our answer, negative 13. Okay. Let's do number 20 next. And I'm kind of skipping around here. That's what you want to jump back in. Right. But I'm skipping around for your own good. This time we're using the function g of x. And the first letter will tell you which function we're using. Since we're using g of x, I'm gonna write out g of x. I'm gonna keep everything the same. The only thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna let x be four this time. I'm gonna let x be four. So we're gonna put in four for x, but everything else is gonna stay the same. I'm still gonna have that two out in front. I'm still gonna have that exponent of two. And I'm still gonna have that plus five at the end. The only thing that's different is I let X be four and see what happens, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square this four. When I square four, that's the same thing as multiplying it by itself, right? We're gonna get four times four, which is what? Four times four, that is 16. So I'm gonna have a 16 right here. Everything else is gonna stay the same. So now I have two times 16 plus five. So what comes next? The multiplication, that's right. I'm doing two times 16. That's gonna give me 32, 32. I've still got that plus five at the end that I have to account for. And then the last thing I do is I add. 32 plus five is going to give me 37. Okay, that's gonna be our answer. And the last one I'm gonna do is number 23. Number 23. H of four. H of four. So this time we're using H of X and we're putting in four for X. So I'm gonna keep everything the same. I'm still gonna have my eight. I'm still gonna have my minus three. The only thing that's gonna change is I'm gonna let X be four and see what happens. So what am I gonna do first? Am I gonna subtract or am I gonna multiply? What do you think, coach? We need to excuse my dear Aunt Sally, but you gotta use the multiplication first. Right, we're gonna multiply first. I have three times four. That's going to be 12. So that's going to give me a 12. I've still got that minus sign off to the left side, and I've still got that 8. That's important because that's going to give us our last step, which is subtraction. 8 minus 12, that's going to be negative 4. Negative 4. And we're done. So those are the last nine questions that you're going to see on the test. Those are called function values. And really all you're doing is you're taking a bunch of functions and you're evaluating them at different X values, right? So the X values are always gonna be on the inside of these parentheses. And whatever number you get in return is going to be not your X value, but your Y value, right? So that's the way that's gonna go, all right? So that's really all I wanted to talk about today. I just wanted to go through a couple questions on the test. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box because now I'm about to go on to the last slide and we'll talk about what's gonna be due on Sunday. So you've got two different assignments that you need to turn in. You got your function values. We did that earlier this week, right? The function values classwork. We did that on Tuesday. Make sure you turn that in by Sunday. And you've got your function test. Make sure you turn that in by Sunday. All right. 
I will see everybody next week on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. If you have any questions about today's lecture, or if you have any questions about the test or the classwork that you weren't able to figure out, just throw it down in the chat box and I will get to you very soon. You guys have a great day, a mathematical day, right?